We're here in Loch Linney. It's December and it's cold, but it's a beautiful day. And behind us is a fish farm. These have become an increasingly familiar sight along the west coast of Scotland since the early 1970s. Fish farms have become important to Scotland for a few reasons. And one of the main ones and most obvious is that they provide a source of protein and a good source of food. So other important aspects of these fish farms is that they provide stable employment and quite a lot of employment to remote areas like this one in particular, especially when it's difficult to find other jobs and other jobs can be quite seasonal. It's good for remote rural communities that are going to be able to keep young people and young families in our very fragile communities, which is very good, very good news for, for everybody. Aquaculture in Scotland makes a significant contribution to the Scottish economy. That means that the Scottish government wants to push to increase the amount of fish farms we have and the amount of production. Uh, they actually want to double it over the next 20 years or so. Well, the problem with fish farming, um, well, an increase in fish farming, is that other people want to use the space as well. So you've got marine tourism, you've got fishing, you've got other leisure activities like kayaking and sailing, and you have people who live along the coasts who might not necessarily want to see an increase in production or an increase in that type of view. In the Aquaspace project, the James Hutton Institute has been working on the contribution that aquaculture developments make to the characteristics of seascapes. These are some of the social and cultural benefits, as well as some of the threats or risks to seascapes in Scotland and in the rest of Europe. In Aquaspace, we're using cutting edge visualization tools, virtual reality headsets to look at scenarios of layouts of aquaculture, the role aquaculture plays in seascapes. Use of the tools is enabling us also to explain to people a bit more about what aquaculture entails, enabling them to visit and tour sites in ways that they wouldn't otherwise be able to, going into the middle of fish cages, looking up from underneath, or being able to move them to other locations within a site. This is raising people's understanding and awareness of what aquaculture can offer, what the opportunities are for individuals, for industry and for society at large. As well as competition for space, you also have some aspects which aren't necessarily seen as positive. So like all intensive farming, uh, fish farming has some environmental impacts. People are understandably concerned about the visual impact uh, in my view, we should be more concerned about the effects on wildlife, on wild salmon, on shooting of seals, and on the effects of acoustic deterrent devices on porpoises and dolphins. For the Aquaspace project, we asked the industry what their main issues were, and sea lice and the treatment of sea lice was one of the most significant. While fish interactions uh, and sea lice at the moment are uh, a hot topic. Uh, one of the most difficult issues that the fish farm industry faces uh, at the moment and it's a very difficult technical scientific issue uh, for us as a planning authority to deal with. Um, so any shared expertise on sea lice is, is, uh, is good experience for us. In my work on the social acceptability of salmon farming on the west coast of Scotland as well, it was also a major concern. As a result, we've spent some time looking into how we can help. My work on Aquaspace has been looking to understand the dispersal of sea lice between salmon aquaculture farms, uh, with a particular focus on the west coast of Scotland. Um, we're interested in sea lice because they're a, a parasite that affect wild and farmed salmon, so they occur naturally, but often found in great abundances on, on fish farms, and this has uh, economic costs and, and ecological costs to do with treating them. The salmon farming industry has been looking at alternatives to chemical treatments. We went to Rosie Curtis Farm where they've been trialling one of these techniques. I'm the manager here at Camus Glass in the lovely Loch Sunert. We have 16 24 metre pens and we farm Atlantic salmon. We have just recently had grass put in all our pens. Grass is the, a cleaner fish, 
which is um, helping to prevent us having to do any lice treatments. We've had the RAS for seven months now, and since we've been fully stocked the RAS, we have had no bath treatments at Camus Glass or the whole of Loch Sooner. Alternatives like using RAS are not yet the norm. Most salmon farms still use chemical treatments. Irrespective of that, it's useful to know how sea lice travel from site to site. We do this using computer modelling. Firstly, models which describe where, where winds and water currents move. Uh, and then secondly, understanding how, how those physical drivers actually affect where the sea lice go to and, and their chances of getting from one site to another. Fish farms are arranged in Scotland into what the industry has defined as farm management areas. And we wanted to understand whether managing the sites within these areas was likely to be effective for uh, controlling sea lice outbreaks. So we used the model outputs to investigate uh, firstly how connected the different farm management areas might be to one another, but also to look at the possibility of rearranging the boundaries between the areas in order to, to make more coherent units. So we've looked at some of the issues there are with expanding the salmon aquaculture industry on the west coast of Scotland and some of the tools that we've developed to try and address them. We've done a lot more work in the Aquaspace project on how to make space for aquaculture in Europe using different techniques and tools. All of this information is available on the Aquaspace Toolbox website. Here is the address. Thank mm -hmm. you.